Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 13 of our C Sharp for Automation Testing video series. And in this video, we'll be discussing about working with non-generic collections of C Sharp. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 12 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Collections. What is this collection? And I have shown something like system.collections namespace. And in the slide before we started, I said a non-generic collection. First of all, what is generic? Don't worry about it. While we get into that, the generic collections, I will tell what generics is all about. But as of now, just keep informed that this collection that we're going to discuss about is going to be a non-generic collections. So unlike arrays, collections provide a more flexible way to work with groups of objects. So here in collection, you can create your own object and create a collection of it. So collections are very flexible to work with and are very handy while working with small to big automation project. So there are different types of collections available in C Sharp, but we are not going to really deep dive into those things because for automation testing, the very few collection informations, at least the non-generic collection itself is more than enough. And there are some collections which are very very interesting for at least the non-generic collections or array list and hash tables. So you can find a different or complete list of collection detail from this hyperlink that is shown here. It is taken from MSDN. So let's work with some of these collection then. So for that I'm gonna flip to Visual Studio. Alright guys so this is the same project which we have been working so long. At least this code is from our arrays program. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut this particular piece of code and I'm going to create a method. Maybe I'm going to call this method as called as public static void array example. And then I'm going to hold all this code right here so that you can always refer this code and how it looks like. So we're going to transform this kind of code a lot and we're going to evolve through an array to collections. So what we're going to do for this example is this. We are going to take a login page. Let's say we have a login page and we have a control and values for the particular login page. And you can see that this control has a control like username, password, and there is a button. And the values for the username is going to be EA and the password is EA123. And for the button, it is going to be a submit value. And you may encounter these kind of situations in your automation and if you have come from a QTP background then you will know that there is something called as tables where you retrieve the table information from an Excel sheet and if you're going to do the same thing with C Sharp it's very very simple. All you can do is you can create a collection. So what I'm going to do I'm going to flip to Visual Studio and I'm just going to write a very simple method this time. And let's write a method name as public static void non-generic collections. So here I'm going to work with what is called as hash tables. So if I just do hash table table is equal to new hash table, you can actually see that the hash table will not be available by default in your uh, in your class file. All you have to do is you have to just hit control dot to add the reference control dot you can see there is something called as using system dot collections so this is the namespace that we saw in our slide which is responsible for holding a non-generic collection so I'm just gonna add that and right now what we're gonna do we're gonna achieve this guy what I'm gonna do is if I pass username then I should get the value EA and if I pass password, then I should get the value EA123. And if I pass button, then I should get submit. And this kind of concept in C Sharp is otherwise called as keys and values. So we are going to do exactly the same thing with hash table as well. In hash table, if you see here, if I want to add a value for this hash table, you can just use the instance object of the hash table as table dot there is a method called add and you can see that it has a key and value. So key is going to hold the key which you are going to store to identify the value to perform the operation. So I'm just going to use this add method and here as we know 
our key is going to be username and the value is going to be EA so username and the value is going to be EA similarly I'm going to add one more key as password and the value is going to be EA123 and the last one is going to be button and the value is going to be submit there we go so now our hash table has all the values which is required for performing our automation testing all right great but how do I retrieve this value out from it it's very very simple all you have to do is just pass the key and you will get the value right so let's say if I want to print this value so the username is you can just say plus and then you can pass table and if you hit a square bracket there it will ask you for the key and the key is going to be username right cool there we go similarly you can get the password and the button so here the password and button I'm just gonna save it and now if I try to execute this particular method let's first call this method non generic collection so non generic collection is I'm gonna save this and if I start the execution you can see that the username is EA the password is EA123 and the button is submit right what if there are many values in here for our hash table let's say we have like 20 to 30 values so I cannot keep on writing this many lines of code so in order for that the very very simple solution is just delete that line and add a for each oops for each and as we already saw the for each loop in our course of C sharp for automation testing you can just pass the collection here and the collection is nothing but the table that we have and here there is something called as keys right so this will actually hold all the key value to be iterated for my hash table so I'm gonna call this as key and then console.write line I can just say the value for key is I can just put something like this and then here I can just pass table and I can pass the key here right as we accessed in our single line so now I'm just gonna save this and if I try to execute this code you can see that the value for password is EA123 the value for button is submit and the value for username is EA so it's again bringing all the values out from it using a very very single line of code instead of the three lines of code that you wrote so if you have any number of values within your hash table you can keep on adding that right so in our next video we'll talk something about generic collections and we'll talk about how to overcome some of these problems here and how to work with a larger number of data and also how to work with a type safe data with a generic collections so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day